Good morning, my friends. This is Pastor Stephen Brooks. Welcome to Morning Glory, our Wednesday morning midweek Bible study. I'm so glad you're here today. And I'm over in the sanctuary teaching today. We had a little technical problem in the Morning Glory studio, but nevertheless, I'm here to bring a special word of the Lord to you that will bless you, make you strong so that you can do the things, the amazing things that God is going to be accomplishing through you this year. Let's jump over to Isaiah 48 and let's begin in prayer. Heavenly Father, as we study your word today, we thank you for your Holy Spirit. Let every person watching become very familiar with the ministry and the guidance of your Holy Spirit. Father, in a much deeper dimension than ever before, we thank you in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And God's going to do it. Amen. That means so be it. Hallelujah. Well, for those of you also that are on the 21 day liquid fast, you're getting close to the finish line. God bless you. Just keep taking it one day at a time. And I know for many of you that have already started at this point, you have a good rhythm. Uh, You have that redundancy where every day kind of repeats. You wake up, you go to work, you drink, drink, drink. Uh, you found you have by, by this point, I'm sure you found what works best for you. Uh, for me, it's apple juice, which of course gets kind of boring, but at the same time, it gets the job done. Praise the Lord. And for myself, I started a few days earlier than what most people did. So for me today is day number 21, about time to bring the ship into the harbor. Praise God. Pastor Stephen, what are you going to eat? A giant meatloaf? And mashed potatoes, honestly, I have no idea, although I won't be going real heavy (laughs) like that. You know, the good thing about a juice fast, even if you're using real thin juice, is that you can acclimate so much faster to eating as compared to water fasting. If you're just doing water, you have to be so gentle in uh, bringing food back into your system. It's got to be real soft food, and then you got to go through all the different stages. But, you know, with juice fasting, you can, you'll still have to take your time and ease back into it. I'm not uh, encouraging anybody to throw anything greasy into the system after you have basically have flushed and cleansed your system. But it is nice that, you know, you can get back up and operating much quicker when you're doing juice. Praise the Lord. By the way, did you know that when you fast, it's proven now scientifically that when you fast, your, your brain, your, your head actually creates brand new cells, brand new brain cells. It is absolutely amazing. The cleansing process that takes place through fasting. Now we do it for spiritual purposes, but I tell you what, uh, it is a vehicle that God also honors, uh, towards moving towards better health. And so for many of you that will be coming off of your fast, I just want to encourage you to, you know, talk to the Lord about your eating habits. If you're in a habit of just throwing a bunch of junk food in there, and now you've kind of cleaned the system, like you've gone through the engine and you've got it nice and clean, you don't want to um, mess it all up. Praise God. So try to eat healthy and aim for a hundred years of age. Praise God. By the way, one of the books that I read, uh, read the whole book on this fast was a man that lived to be 115 years old. And up till the day where he took his last breath, he was still up walking around, smiling, still hardly any wrinkles on his face. And he gave the explanation of why that was. But I tell you what, uh, when you take care of yourself and, you know, fasting really helps with that. Uh, you know, you can set your sights of uh, living out a long life, praise God, because there are anointings, even mantles, ways of understanding God that, that are different between 70 and 60. When you get to 80, you'll, you'll cross into a new decade and you'll know some things about God that nobody in their 50s knows. Then you get to 90. Then you get to 100. I tell you what, we need to stick around for all that God has. Praise God. Think of all the good things that you can do by living out the fullness of your days. 
All right. So God's grace to those that are continuing on in your fast. God is working. God is with you. Be encouraged. You're getting uh, near to the end. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. By the way, if you were not on this fast, but I've actually gotten quite a few emails from those, uh, some that actually will be starting uh, pretty soon. They had things going on at the first of the month. So, hey, whatever works for you, jump in. Praise God. But engage God through the spiritual platform of empowerment through prayer and fasting. Now, today, we're going to be in Isaiah 48, verse 17. Let's uh, take off from here. Thus says the Lord, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, I am the Lord, your God, who teaches you to profit, who leads you, this is very important, who leads you by the way you should go. Now, one of the vital ministries of the Holy Spirit is to provide needed guidance in the journey of of life. And you're on that journey right now. If you're alive and you're listening to me, you are on the journey of life. So it's very important to have a vision for your life, but you must also have direction. Now in the month of December that we came past, I taught, uh, and also actually a lot in November, I taught in depth on the subject of vision. And we see the value of having vision, but you also need to have direction. And our vision reveals what we are to do. It reveals your assignment, your purpose, but direction will show you how to accomplish it. Praise the Lord. My friends, no Christian can ever outgrow the need for divine direction in their life. And If you will look around throughout the body of Christ and even, and this is what's most important, even look internally, look inwardly, you will see that most of the frustrations that other Christians would be experiencing and perhaps even yourself, uh, any uh, frustrations today, they can be traced back to misdirection. You went in the wrong direction. You, you took a detour, you went over here or you went over there. And so it was not the route that God wanted you to take. So I think it's important to also understand in this area of being guided by the Holy spirit, that not all open doors are God's doors. And there are doors that are open And you might think, oh, that's even like almost like supernatural that that door would open a door like that. Some of them can be traps. You have to learn the relationship of the Holy Spirit in your life so that you can pick up on these things and stay on the right path. Now, he is committed to leading you if you are committed to following him. Praise God. He'll he'll. I tell you what, he'll end that frustration of wrong decisions, of going in the wrong direction and then running into problems because of that. Uh, When you learn to follow him very carefully, it terminates those frustrating moments when you realize, uh uh-oh, I've gotten off track. Praise God. By the way, that's very true in business. It's very true in investing. And if you are, say like you're like an angel investor, you're one of those people where you have money, you just, you got, you just have extra money and you're looking for places to invest uh, into the, maybe the next new thing. Well, you know what? There's a million new things out there. And the moment they find out you've got money, oh, they come out of the woodwork. People say, oh, come over here, come over here, invest over here. This is a winner. This is a sure deal. And on and on it goes. And there could be unlimited open doors. But then again, Many of those are going to end in bankruptcy. Many of of those are never going to become successful. So you want to realize that not all open doors are God's doors. And this is true in business. This is true in ministry. And you've got to get good accuracy in this. And you're going to. You're going to. John chapter 16 and verse 13 However, when he, the spirit of truth has come, he will guide you. 
See, he will guide you into all truth. Woo, that's amazing. So supernatural guidance, it makes all the difference in life. The leading of the Holy Spirit is the cure for the disappointments and frustrations experienced by many Christians because here's why. Because the journey of life is long, especially if you live to be a hundred, even if you live to 80, I'm telling you, some of you, you're listening to me and you're, you're still 20 with <laughs> there's college students that's listening. There are those in their thirties and forties that, that are listening. You still got long ways to go. Mm, the journey of life is long and without a guide, you're going to end up making wrong turns. You need a guide. You need a guide in life. So every time we ignore the leadings of the Holy Spirit, we end up in what I would call crisis type situations. And those are no fun. Those, those are, you know, you will have some things in life that just come maybe as a test, maybe just because of living life and life itself has a lot of challenges. The last thing that you want to do is just be adding to that because of going the wrong way, making wrong decisions and not knowing where to go. Mm -mm. So the spirit of truth is going to guide you and you're going to get it right. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Proverbs chapter 14 is very important. It says, there is a way that seems right to a man, but its end is the way of death. Have you ever talked to somebody that is adamant about what they're about to do and not even the Holy Spirit could talk them out of it? They are so convinced that maybe a husband would not even consider listening to his wife. His mind is made up. Usually when there's moments like that, you could almost be guaranteed they're, go they're going off course already. Mm -mm. There is a way that seems right. There is a way that seems right, but it's wrong. It's actually the wrong path. So many have gotten off track by leading themselves on a path that they considered to be right. And you know, we operate my friends from a human perspective. So therefore we can only review the past and you know, we can sit down and try to analyze and project what the future is going to be like, but we don't really know because we're not there yet. But there's a big difference here because God does not need to make projections. That's because he, he knows, and he's the only one who does. He knows the end from the beginning. So I think because of that, we should submit to his leadings. Why? He knows where he's taking us. Woo! Praise God. Isaiah chapter 46 and verse 10, declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times, things that are not yet done. You know, we don't have any access to the future. We could have some like prophetic insight and some, you know, uh, you know, word of wisdom, things like that. But the reality is we aren't there yet. We, we may only get like a little tiny sliver of the picture, but only God knows the full thing. So it is wisdom to entrust our destinies into the hand of the one that actually holds the future in his hand. Come on, praise God. I know I'm speaking to some wise men and women that are smart enough to realize that I should entrust my destiny to God because he knows what the future is. And so he knows how to get me there. So I'm going to follow his leadings. I'm preaching to you today behind the pulpit here in Moravian Falls. But you know, uh, years back, a couple of decades ago, my wife and I were in a certain state on the other side of the country. And we woke up in the morning and Kelly said, Stephen, I had a dream. I said, what'd you dream about? 
She said, the Lord came to me in the dream and said, we're supposed to move to Moravian Falls, North Carolina. I said, well, I've, I think I've heard about that. I think it's like a, like a prophetic type community where, you know, people that really, really value the prophetic live. And my, my ministry was a prophetic ministry. And, uh, I thought, you know, that, that could be pretty cool, but we, you know, up until that time, we only ministered on what you would call the East, excuse me, the West side of America and Southern California is so densely populated. You as an itinerant minister, you can build a full-time ministry just by working that region alone. And so I had, you know, a lot of different churches that I had already had contacts with, and I was already kind of ministering and doing things, staying busy on Wednesdays and Sundays and other nights that would open up. So to somehow suddenly move to North Carolina, we didn't know anybody, didn't know anything or, or anything like that, but Boy, we both felt such a leading, and, and Kelly had that powerful dream, and I said, well, Kelly, I believe the Lord spoke to you, and I believe God's in this, and so we'll just, we'll start to prepare to move to whatever this place is, Moravian Falls, North Carolina. Well, it was only just a couple of days after that, and it, if I'm correct, it could have even have been the very next day. But I got a call from my pastor and uh, he said, Hey, he said, Stephen, where are you at? I said, well, uh, right now I'm over in the uh, Nevada area ministry. He said, um, I've got a speaker coming in this upcoming weekend. And I, I just really feel you're supposed to be here to be a part of it. And uh, can you make it? I said, yeah, I can, I can come over. I said, who's the speaker? And he named the name of a very famous prophet whose home is here in Moravian Falls. Ended up ministering with him, getting to know him some, and I've known him over the years. But I tell you, God can move in the most amazing ways, and you've got to learn to follow that leading of the Holy Spirit. We left everything. We left everything and moved out of here not knowing anybody. And so let me tell you what happened when we arrived. We arrived after having driven uh, that day alone, I think I drove like 500 miles in the motor home and I drove that motor home all the way up this mountain, uh, with, you know, winding roads, which was crazy. It's a 30, it was a 30 foot long motor home, a class A motor home, drove it all the way up to the top of the mountain. And there was a lodge there and I parked the motor home and, uh, I, I got out of the motor home just to rest because I've been driving all day long. And I thought, well, I'm going to take a break. I can rest now and set the motor home up. And somebody said, Hey, do you know, there's a minister's meeting tonight. I said, there is. She said, yeah, it starts in about an hour over here at the lodge. Uh, why don't you come? Uh, since you're, since you're new to the area. I said, uh, yeah, that would be good. Thank you for the invitation. She was the one that was hosting the meeting. Her name was, uh, Elizabeth. I said, okay, I'll be there. So I told Kelly what was going on. And so, you know, kind of spruced myself up and changed for my driving clothes and put some other clothes on. And, uh, and so about 45 minutes later, we're, we're in the lodge and there's about, oh, maybe 25 or 30 ministers that showed up that night for like a minister's get together. And, uh, when, when I walked in, me and Kelly walked in and sat in the back and we sat in the back and then there was some praise and worship. And then after the praise and worship time ended, the lady who was Elizabeth, who was leading the, the worship and hosting the meeting, she said, well, she said, does anybody have anything tonight? Who's getting something in the spirit tonight? She said, I don't really know why, but I think I'm getting something on mantles. I'm getting something about mantles. And then a man in the meeting said, you know, there was some guy that wrote a book on mantles named Stephen Brooks. And then Somebody else said, you know what? I, I think that guy walked in here tonight. And when that, whoever said that, I think that guy walked in here tonight. When that person said that, everybody in the meeting, meeting started laughing. They all started laughing like, oh, that's so silly. There's no way he'd be here. And I jumped up in the back and I lifted my hand and I said, I'm here. <laughs> you talking about shock. And, uh, and you know, Elizabeth said, well, my goodness, come up here and talk to us and minister on the subject of mantles. 
And I did. I ministered that night. And when I finished preaching and teaching, after about 45 minutes of teaching, I began to minister in the spirit and mantles began to fall through the rafters of this of the ceiling and it began to fall on people. And that night I remember distinctly because most of the mantles in the spirit that were falling that were coming down, they were brown color. <laughs> Let me tell you, God knows how to introduce you when he's going to put you somewhere you're supposed to be. And of course, so, so now we own, you know, like the landmark historical property in Moravian Falls. We're right next to the post office. This building has been here since 1877. And actually the church history goes back to the 1830s. Many of the people in this uh, the old timers in this church knew some of the Moravians. And so God just began to do what only he could do. I'm telling you, God knows the future. And if you will trust him and go where he is guiding and leading you, you're going to end up where you're supposed to be at. <laughs> then you end up being celebrated, not tolerated. <laughs> Oh, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. It's quite a journey. It's quite a journey. But my friends, the Holy Spirit is wonderful. Now, Romans chapter 8, uh, this one verse is going to help some of you a whole lot. Let me get a drink of apple juice. I'm getting a little tired of apple juice, but I sure, uh, sure am thankful to the Lord for it. But I think after this fast is complete, I might not see the apple juice anymore for a little while. Praise God. Verse 14, verse 14, for as many as are led by the spirit of God, these are sons of God. So here's the catch. It is the leading of the spirit that guarantees the manifestation of your sonship. Hmm. I, I can show you something that is, uh, whoo, it's staggering. It's, it's, it's so true. It's staggering. It's staggering. That's the word I'm looking for. It's staggering. It's so true. Galatians chapter two, excuse me, Galatians chapter four, verse one and two. Now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child does not differ at all from a slave, though he is master of all, but is under guardians, tutors, and stewards until the time appointed by the Father. Mm -mm. But my friends, until that time comes, there's very little difference between the child and the slave, even though that child technically is master over all things. As long as a believer remains just as a child of God. It's like there's very little difference between them and the way that sinners also struggle to survive and make it in life. Wow. This is because what separates a child from a son is the leading of the Holy spirit. So the leading of the spirit really is the seal of your sonship. Wow. I know so many Christians. Look, just in this county alone, there's over 300 churches. And there are so many Christians that are saved, love God on their way to heaven. And the devil just treats them like a punching bag. I mean, every, everything that happens to the unbeliever, it's like it happens to them. Sickness, cold, flu, car wreck, uh, injury, arthritis, whatever it is. It's like there's very, very little difference. Why? They're not, manifesta they're not manifesting their sonship. Why would that be? They don't know how to be led by the Holy Spirit. Mm -mm -mm. Now, back to Romans again, verse 14. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are sons of God. It makes all of the difference in the world. Woo! Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. When the Israelites departed from Egypt, God led them by a cloud, a pillar of a cloud by day, and the pillar of fire by night. 
and they lacked nothing all through their 40 year journey. So there is something about divine guidance when God is leading you, that provision will always be there. Mm -mm. Well, Pastor Stephen, I'm coming up short. Did you make a wrong move? Did you make a wrong decision? Did you venture into an area that you thought was good, but God did not lead you into that area? Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Mm -mm. Hallelujah. You know what? Right now I see what was previously vulnerabilities in your life where you did not know how to manifest your sonship and it left you vulnerable to what I would call like satanic maneuvers, all kinds of weird, goofy things that the devil does out there in the earth from a, from a person slipping on a banana peel uh, to a person, uh, you know, uh, making a blunder at work and, or whatever the case might be. You know what? I see all of that stuff ending because you're being led of the spirit now. Praise God. Praise God. The fire of the Holy Spirit, which is that fire also that led the Israelites, the fire of the Holy Spirit not only consumes the chaff in our life, but it does provide also the required guidance to walk in the right direction towards the destination that God's got planned for us. It makes things so much easier. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. On the day of Pentecost, cloven tongues of fire sat upon each one of them there in the upper room. So the same Holy Spirit that got the Israelites through the wilderness journey has now, through that Acts chapter 2 experience, he's now come to revisit the earth and to stay in the earth. Praise the Lord. Glory, glory to God. Let me say this. This is very important that no matter how anointed a man or a woman is, when divine guidance is ignored, there's going to be some problems somewhere. There's going to be some mistakes that are made. There's going to be needless errors that occur. That occur. Anointing is not a substitute for divine guidance. Woo! Praise God. Hallelujah. I'll say it again. Anointing is not a substitute for divine guidance. Praise God. Let's go back to uh, Deuteronomy chapter 32. I'm so glad that you're here hungry for God, hungry for the things of the wisdom of God. By the way, the Holy Spirit is also known as the spirit of wisdom. If you like wisdom, you're going to love the Holy Spirit. He is the spirit of wisdom. Deuteronomy 32, verse 9. For the Lord's portion is his people. Jacob is the place of his inheritance. He found him in a desert land and in the wasteland, a howling wilderness. He encircled him. He instructed him. He kept him as the apple of his eye. Thank you, Jesus. So there is always a keeping that God will do for you when you are following his leading and that keeping it involves safety and security. Oh, praise the Lord. Glory to God protection wherever you're at in case somehow suddenly things got kind of interesting. You will not be a statistic of something bad that happened. God will always protect you. Praise the Lord. Praise God. So we want to be very, very sensitive to this guidance of the Holy Spirit. By the way, anything you target that God never told you to target makes you become a target. Did you know that? Oh, Pastor Stephen, if I make a mistake, God's merciful and he'll just back me out of it and I'll just get out of it. No problem. I hope so. I, I, I hope so. But if you, if you do that over and over again, 
God might not back out of it so quick. He might say, you know what? I'm going to let them stew in it a little bit this time. I'm going to let them feel the pressure of it this time so that they'll finally wise up and stop doing this type of stuff. Hmm. Thank you, Lord. Anything you target that God never told you to target makes you become a target. You've got enough to do with your assignment. You don't need to be running after somebody else's uh, a target and trying to emulate them just because that. No, no, no. You stay in your lane. You do your thing. Praise God. And you celebrate them for what they're doing, but you've got enough to do. Praise the Lord. Amen. Stay on task. Praise the Lord. Verse 11. As an eagle stirs up its nest, hovers over its young, spreading out its wings, taking them up, carrying them on its wings. So the Lord alone led him and there was no foreign God with him. In other words, God's in control. We ain't got nobody else in here messing this up, sliming this up. We don't have a third voice in here. The slithery tongue of the devil. No, hallelujah. God's leading and you're hearing and you are following. And because of that, as God goes up, you get on his back, you ride with him and you live life with him. Praise God. And he's the one that does the lifting. Who praise the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Verse 13. He made him ride in the heights of the earth. He made him ride in the heights of the earth. By the way, that is the scripture that God spoke to prophet Kenneth Copeland concerning the aircraft that God said, I'm going to give you that aircraft. And that was the citation 10 many years back. My wife and I had the privilege of being able to sew into that many years ago. And uh, that was the scripture God gave him to receive by faith an aircraft. Well, Pastor Stephen, you should use that too. No, Kenneth, Kenneth Copeland had God speak that to him. I get my own words. I don't go and try to hijack what God told somebody else. Amen. You have to be able to get your own word from God. Mm -hmm. He'll talk to you. You don't need to steal somebody else's word. He'll talk to you. And by the way, if you try to take somebody else's word and make it work for you, it won't work, will it? Some of you have tried that before. I just taught on that just a few days ago. Mm -mm. If you have a little struggle with that, listen to the message that I just taught called the rule of three. Okay. Now, praise God. Let's continue on. He made him ride in the heights of the earth that he might eat the produce of the fields. He made him draw honey from the rock and oil from the flinty rock, curds from the cattle and milk from the flock with fat of lambs and rams of the breed of Bashan and goats with the choicest wheat. Okay. So when we're getting it into things like rams of Bashan, this is all figurative of God's very, very best. Not all beef is the same. Not all steaks are the same. There's, regular type cattle, and then there's black Angus and, you know, on and on it goes. But this here is a representation of, of the best with the choicest wheat and you drink wine, the blood of the grapes. In other words, where does this leading take you to when you allow God to lead you where he wants to take you and you submit to that, where does it take you into increase? It'll take you to his best. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Glory to God. You know, when you study the Bible and you read from Genesis and you go all the way through to Revelation, you see that God speaks directly to individuals. That's very fascinating. And God will guide you by his spirit. He will speak to you by his spirit to maximize his calling on your life. Glory to God. This is going to be a very, very productive and an effective year for you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Judges chapter 6 and verse 14. Verse 14. Then the Lord turned to him, that would be Gideon, and said, Go in this might of yours, and you shall save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Have I not sent you? Whoa, praise God. Oh, God's got a word for you. And when you get that word, it can take a person who in many ways 
had some cowardly traits, and that was Gideon hiding in the wine press. Hiding. Why? Because he's afraid he's going to get robbed. And they're, they're in such a place of bondage, so beaten down. But you know what? God can give you a word, and God can say, have I not sent you? And the next thing you know, you're not only going, you're now leading others to victory. Praise God. And that is what divine guidance will do. It will lead you into victorious, conquering exploits that God has called you to accomplish for His glory. Praise God. Divine backing is only guaranteed by divine guidance. In other words, he said, have I not sent you? That's divine backing. Why? Because he gave him divine guidance. He said, go. He said, you're my guy. Gideon's like, I'm not sure if you got the right one. Oh yeah, I've got the right one. I can find anybody, anywhere, anytime. That's the way God sees it. And he's got his guy. Praise God. And the rest became history. You know, when you really get dialed in to the leading of the Holy Spirit, it begins to evaporate guesswork out of your life where you say, well, you know, I, I don't really know if God's in this, but you know, I, I hope he is. Here we go. God's going to remove that guesswork out of your life. And there's various ways in which God communicates to us concerning this divine leading. But while you can get guidance through prayer and that heightens your sensitivity. And while you can get guidance through the word as the spirit would speak a word. I also want you to know the voice of the Holy spirit. You know, when the Lord told my wife that we are to move to Moravian falls, you know, there's no, there's no passage of scripture that says thou shalt move to Moravian falls. <laughs> it's not in the Bible. There's all kinds of things that are in the Bible that you, you know, that those things are there, but how many other millions of things are there that are not in there? That's why the chief instrumentality of speaking to God's people through the voice of God is the Holy spirit and the Holy spirit can speak to you and give you supernatural guidance and direction. You know, we have our new property out on the 14.5 acres that is right next to the airport, a beautiful property. And we're going to build our, our new ministry headquarters and TV studio out there. But some years back, I was going to build the television studio on that green grass that we have out in front of the church building. We have a, we have almost an acre of grass out there. And although I sense like that's probably not the best place to put it. I, I had been around so many uh, television ministries and particularly one that I, that I was at when I was in India, when I saw how effective they are in ministering to God's people and reaching the lost that I said, I'm going to build a studio out there as soon as I get back from this international trip. And would you believe that the Lord spoke to me and said, no, do not build it there, but wait until I show you the place. And 13 years later, God showed us the place by the airport. And you know what? God paid for it. Hallelujah. Yes, he works through his people, but the blessing, the voice of direction, it all originates from him. Because mm -hmm. I'm telling you, God's people can pick up on when God's in on something. Glory to God. Woo, glory to God. Now, you don't ever want to try to force God to talk. Because we can't do that. But if you will position yourself through prayer, through time in the Word, and also just through the knowledge of understanding how vital this is, where you say to the Lord, Lord, I really need the help of your Holy Spirit. Life is very complex down here, and I need divine guidance. Oh, Lord, help me to be very sensitive and pick up on what it is you're doing in this particular area. I'll tell you what, you'll get very, very accurate in the things that you do and what is supposed to be in the future, you'll move into it and then it will become your now and you'll just keep going forward and forward like walking on stones successfully. Praise God. Praise the Lord. 
Praise be to God. Hallelujah. Glory. Glory. Lift your hands for a moment. Lord, we just praise you. There's, there's like a new anointing coming of hearing, hearing, not the voice of the deceiver, not the voice of the enemy, but the voice of the Spirit of God. Praise the Lord. Some of you have never heard the Holy Spirit talk. And sometimes that's because people don't know. People in the body of Christ don't know that the Holy Spirit can speak. They, they don't know what to think about the Holy Spirit. They think maybe he's an it. But he's not an it. He's not like a like vague fog or something like that. He's a person. And he talks. He sure can talk. Mm -mm. So if you've never heard his voice before, I want you to be open to that. Praise God. And don't try to make it happen, but be open to God talking to you. Glory, glory to the Lord. And he'll also lead you through the inner witness because he lives on the inside of you. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Lift your hands. Father, I pray for your people right now. This is a new year, uh, new ears to hear, to hear, to tune out all of the things of the world, to tune out uh, all of the wrong voices, but to be able to hear the voice of your spirit and to obey. We thank you, Father God. We give you all of the praise. We give you all of the praise. Father, we thank you for your Holy Spirit because he is to us who Jesus was to the 12 apostles. He is to us what Jesus was to them. And we thank you that the Holy Spirit is with us all the time. And Father, we thank you that what being around Jesus for three and a half years could not do for Peter in one day in Acts chapter 2, the Holy Spirit completely changed him. And so, Father, just like Peter, I pray that everything that you have put into your people, just like everything that Jesus sowed into Peter and the other apostles for three and a half years, it was like there was an activation when the Holy Spirit came upon them and they were filled with the Spirit. And then they stepped into the fullness of their assignment. I thank you, Father, that the Holy Spirit is working right now with your people. They're going to get to know your Holy Spirit very, very well as a person. Now we give you all of the praise. We thank you for this. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And amen. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Glory to God. When the Holy Spirit talks, just move forward with what he's telling you to do. Praise the Lord. Cooperate with him. Don't grieve him. Just cooperate with him. Go with it, with what he's saying, and it will lead you to victory every single time. Now, if you're watching today, and this is all you, new to you. You don't know about Jesus as being your Savior, but the Holy Spirit is working on your heart, and you know you need to get your life right with God. Then I want to lead you in prayer to receive Jesus as your Savior. If you used to be a Christian, but you fell away because you listened to the wrong voice, it's time to come back right now, and Jesus will restore you. Let us all pray together. Just say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I repent of all of my sins, and I ask you to forgive me. Jesus, save me right now. Write my name in your book of life, and step into my life today, and lead me, and guide me by your Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. In your name I pray, amen, and amen. Praise God. Glory. Glory to the Lord. Well, the Holy Spirit is really moving today. God's Word really stirs things up in the spirit realm. I tell you what. I tell you what. You and the Lord are going to be having some amazing times together. You're really going to get to know the Holy Spirit this year. Praise God. Let's take Holy Communion together today. Grab some unleavened bread and grape juice. Let's pray over it. Father, we bless the bread and the juice. Through this prayer, we set it apart as 
being holy. And we thank you that this is now the body and the blood of Jesus. Father, as we receive his flesh, we thank you for strength and we thank you for sensitivity to pick up on the leading of your Holy Spirit. We thank you, O oh God, that where he leads, we will follow. We give you all of the praise in Jesus' name. Let's receive the Lord's body together. Heavenly Father, thank you for the blood of Jesus. Oh God, we give you praise. We thank you that we are being led by the spirit of truth. We thank you that our lives are guided by the spirit of wisdom. We thank you, Father God, that you have increased for us. You have good things for us. We thank you that you have our best interest at heart, and we follow the leading of your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, let's receive his blood together. Praise the Lord. I'm praying for you as there are those that are still fasting. I'm lifting you up in prayer. God's going to get you to the finish line. Now, as these teachings are being a blessing to you, I want to encourage you to sow your love offering into the ministry to support this work. That information is now being placed upon the screen. And if you like, you could mail your offering in. Or if you would like to bring it on in online, you can do so as well. That information is on the screen. And go ahead and sow a seed of honor for the great ministry of the Holy Spirit in your life. If you're mailing in a check or you're giving online and there's a little notation that you could put, just put honor seed for the Holy Spirit. Praise God. He is guiding you and leading you right now. He is guiding you and leading you today. You know, the apostles had to be around Jesus all the time, all day long, all night. Now they had a little break, you know, cause they were, they were married, you know, Jesus healed Peter's mother-in-law. So we know obviously Peter's married and church history pretty much reveals that all of the apostles of the 12 were married. So, um, you know, th they would go home every now and then, but for the most time they were with Jesus on that, uh, tour of the evangelistic ministry of Jesus Christ of Nazareth going all over the place. And so they were there all day, you know, sleeping with him at night and stuff like that in different places. But the Holy Spirit's even closer in a sense, whereas uh, he's like with you 24 seven. And that really is what's amazing. As you get into the Lord's presence, you become very aware of the Holy Spirit with you in you guiding you. And he's there all the time, all the time. Well, Pastor Steve and I seem to be a little bit dull on this. You make the move. You make the move. You make the move. In other words, you have to know that God is committed to leading you if you are committed to following him, seriously following him. And he really will lead you. Praise God. I mean, Isaiah chapter 48, verse 17, he'll even teach you to profit. He'll lead you forward financially. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Father, bless your people, the seeds that they're sowing right now, the offering honor seeds that they're sowing to say thank you for the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Father, I pray you multiply those seeds. And I just thank you, Father God, that you are showing them the right next step forward. Father, we give you all of the praise. We thank you for the peace that passes understanding as we are in your presence. I pray you give strength to those that are still on the fasting journey. I thank you for your grace upon their lives. I thank you for God encounters that so many of them are destined to have with you. Father, we give you praise. We give you praise. And Father, as we close, we say where your spirit leads, we will follow because he knows what he's doing. Thank you, O oh God. Father, we give you all of the praise in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. 
Well, thank you for watching today. I pray you have a wonderful week as you continue on today. And just give consideration to these things because this is a year of divine guidance. And you've got to stay dialed in every day because there's miracles every day that God wants to bring past you. And you've got to be able to pick that up and walk with the Holy Spirit. That could be a new friendship. It could be a phone call you're supposed to take or not take. It could be an open door. But just walk with the Lord. Walk with the Lord. Praise God. All right. See you back again real soon. Bye-bye.